Hello and welcome to this session today uh, where we're going to take a deep dive into how to create a master CV. I'm Arun Singhal, your coach and mentor with 40 years of experience in talent development. So let's look at what are we going to do today. Uh, what we're going to do today is to provide you an in-depth understanding of how can you prepare a master CV that will help you prepare a great CV. And at the end of this module, what will you learn? You will learn what's, why is it important to create a master CV because we don't prepare master CVs today. So it's important to know why is it important. Then what do we do? What do we do today in place of master CV? What, what, what's the thing that we do that fills the gap there? How should we prepare a master CV? We'll take a look at that. And what we will also show you is not a complete, but a, a picture of what a master CV could look like. All right, so ready for the session today? All right, so let's look at why should we prepare a, a master CV. So you create a master CV to have a CV in which contains all the information, all in capitals, all about your qualifications, experience, knowledge, skills, competencies, from which you can choose the right one for each JD. Theoretically speaking, conceptually speaking, you don't know what information would you need in which CV, which JD, I'm sorry. So you need to have everything and there are times when there is important things that you've done in life, in your career and you have not captured in your CV and that goes waste. So having a master CV makes the process of preparing right CV for each JD easy. How does it make it easy? You have a repository of information in the master CV and then you can modify it. You can mostly delete or you can modify the right words for each JD as we will go along and see later on. It also provides you a document where all your qualification experience sets are listed for use instead of relying on your memory. Our memory is at times can give us, you know, uh, skips, right? So instead of totally relying on memory, you have a document called Master CV. You have listed everything that you have done in your life that you could possibly use. So that's the good reason for preparing a Master CV. Make sense? All right. So let's look at what do we do today to, to prepare or to in place of Master CV. Let's think about it. Can you please note down on a piece of paper or in your, in your memory? And then let's talk about it. Let's tally notes as we've been doing in other sessions so far. So what you see is that most of us at best create a couple of CVs for all recruiters. Like we can create, we create marketing CVs. I want to go into marketing and consulting. See, I'll create one CV for marketing, one for consulting. So I have two separate CVs. So these are what is called role-based CVs. We don't create a master CV, most of us. We don't even think of creating a master CV and using it to individualize our CV for each recruiter. Consequently, what happens? We miss using a lot of things that we may have in ourselves and that we have not fully explored to document and use in the right places. If it comes to our mind, we use it. If it doesn't come, we let it go. And that, that way we are not using our experiences, qualification, knowledge, all that we have gathered fully for each JD. So we don't individualize our CVs and we become satisfied with the easy option of a couple of broad-based role CVs. So we take, it's an easy option out and we take it. This leads to a lot of potential disconnects between the essential and measurable job JD requirements that the each JD requires and our CV in spite of us having those requirements. And that's a pity that we have those requirements, we don't remember. And uh, since it is not there in our in a document that we could draw from, we forget it, we don't use it, and we let it go. And this leads to missing many opportunities for getting shortlisted, and we keep wondering, why are we not getting shortlisted, in spite of preparing role-based CV? We say, hey, the best practice as of now we know is preparing role-based CV, we are doing that, but hey, sir, I'm still not getting shortlisted. And there is a good reason for that now we know, right? So why not consider a process of preparing a master CV that will have all the places, all in capital, that you are that you are about, that you have done, that you have acquired knowledge in and skills in, in one place. That's a master CV. That will take away the easy option, a process that will take away an easy option of creating only a couple of role-based CVs. And 
makes you fully digitalize your CV. So a master CV is the stepping stone to individualizing your CV for each JD that you'll be applying for. And that will ensure that you will connect to the recruiting person or the person who is shortlisting a lot better with an individualized JD. And that should lead to you getting shortlisted a lot more if you apply the process of, if you use the process of applying in the right places. Remember, we talked about it. So how do we prepare a master CV? Let's look at some of these things that we do. So what you need to do is, your it's a, it's a brainstorming, it's a data gathering exercise. And you need to go step by step and put it in the format that we discussed, all that you have. So first you need to look at, start with 10 plus 2. You have done your schooling. So start after that as a starting point. List all your educational qualifications and certifications under the section of qualification and certification. Describe your personality traits in about me. There is a section as we saw in the format about me. So describe what you think you are. Don't worry about am I doing it too much here. Just just whatever you have come to know. And you've although if you have gathered your strengths by doing, as I talked about in one of the other rest, other courses, and you have a good idea of what your personality traits are. List all your skills and competencies. What are you good at doing? What have you acquired uh, that in a separate section of skills and competency that you have not included in about me. List and describe all your work experiences. If you have work experiences and you have a lot of work experience, put all of them without worrying about the length of the CV. The CV, master CV can go into a couple of pages. My own master CV goes into five pages because I have now about 40 years of experience and even if I summarize and put it, it takes a lot of pages to put it, to use it. If you don't have experiences, many of you could be freshers, right? So in that case, you might have done projects while you are graduating, either in your uh, undergraduate or in your post-graduation. So if you've done those, list and describe your project experiences. Experiences and experience. It could be as a result of your working in a job or it could be as part of doing projects. List and describe your extracurricular expense and ex experiences. Extracurricular, you might do a lot of projects. You might have some gainful experiences. So for, don't forget, include them in your master's CV. Provide your contact details at the bottom of the format that we talked about, including your LinkedIn URL. Please ensure that your LinkedIn profile is in sync with what you're writing here because you don't want a recruiter to look at your CV and then go to your LinkedIn profile and see, hey, there are gaps in this. So make sure that both are in sync. Use a consistent, so that's in terms of content. Use a consistent font type like Arial's or Time Roman. If you like something else, I'm fine with that. But these are the two most common ones that are easy to read. Use a 14 font size. I'm getting into a lot of nitty gritties here because I think that might help you. Use a 14 font size for the name and position at the top of the board. So there's on the right hand side next to the photograph, there's a name and the position. Use that in bold, a 14 font size. Then there are headings that you can use, 12 font size in the bold. So the bold should separate from the main content. 10 font size in normal for the lists and descriptions. So that's the font. And if you have, you could play around with that, but keep that kind of proportion. Keep that kind of, kind of grading in, in your CV formatting. Don't fall below 10 because anything that you fall to 9 and 8 is difficult to read. So minimum is 10 font size. Use consistent bullet points for listing. Use bullet points and use consistent the same kind of bulleting. Don't use different kind of bulleting. It's easy to, it's good to have some consistency in your CV. Write only, very important thing, write only what you can confidently talk in the interview. If you're not confident, please do not write. Because then what is going to happen is your CV will promise something to the recruiter. Based on this, you will individualize this, uh, your CV, send it to a, comp uh, a recruiter against a JD. And then in the interview, they will ask you about it and say, hey, this guy doesn't even know about his CV. So please take care of this. Check for spacing that it is looking good. Not too crowded, not too empty. If crowded, reduce the content and description. Do it in short, right? And if required, even choose what you need to do. If empty and content description, go back. Instead of increasing the easy option, increase the font size and spacing, go back to your 10 plus 2, before 10 plus 2 
and look for what else could you have. Were you a school captain in your 10th, 10th, 10th to 12th standard kind of a thing? Did you do a great job? Why not include that? So see, look for things that you have done there and include that in preparing this master CV. Right? Okay, so how does a master CV look like? I'm going to show you not a very good example. This is my own one. I could, I don't have a copy of master CV from anyone. So I picked up my own CV. Now, this CV has, it gives you an idea. It comes into multiple pages. And whatever is there on your screen, you need to add the things like we talked about, add me, knowledge, skills, competency, and format it right. So this gives you a, some idea of what a master CV could look like, right? Okay, so what did we learn in this module? So what we learned in this module is most of us use a couple of role-based CVs for all recruiters and we don't prepare a master CV. And this process is not effective because we miss our full list of who we are and do not fully individualize your CV for each JD because we don't have full information. So we use partial information. And then we, if, even if we have something, we're not able to communicate to the potential recruiter in our CV about having that. We need to consider preparing a master CV that will have all our details from which we can choose to individualize our CVs for each JD as we will see later on. We now know how can we prepare a master CV. I've given you some guidelines and what does it look like also, right? So having done that, where do we go from here? So in the next session, next lecture, I'm going to go with you into deep dive with uh, how to modify each of the master CVs to prepare a JD based, a specific CD, CV for the JD. That's what we're going to do. So thank you so much uh, for taking your time watch, watching this uh, video. I hope you liked it and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much again.